October might very well to turn out to be one of the most exciting months for Tesla trading, mainly because there is an event coming up, in my opinion, that is vastly underestimated and most people think it's not even going to happen. That event is the launch of the affordable Model Y. This model has been delayed since July 1st, where it was originally intended to launch. But because Trump and the big beautiful bill made the EV credits expire September 30th, that's today, everything changed. And people have forgotten that Tesla intended this launch. As I elaborated yesterday in my video, I outlined all the reasons why I believe we will launch in October. So now the big question is for us, what does it exactly mean? What are the exact scenarios of launching and how do we get that timing right? Because if we can get that timing right, we are looking at an X or at a minimum, a 3X expansion of Tesla's total addressable market because of the price elasticity curve. So it's a very, very big deal and everyone on Wall Street knows it. Everyone knows that the launch of the affordable model is a very big deal, but no one seems to know that the likelihood that this launch actually happens now is extremely high. That is our opportunity here. And in this video, we are going to go into the exact scenarios that I'm seeing when this launch happens in October, because timing is everything. The scenarios are based on the assumption that the E41, that is the affordable model, the model around hopefully $32,000, which would expand the total market size of Tesla dramatically and boost the stock. The assumption is that model has not been forgotten by Tesla, but completely the opposite. This model has been in preparation since July for launch and Tesla just decided to delay it for obvious strategic reasons. The tax credits are expiring and you want to boost the Model Y, the high priced or standard priced Model Y volume by not launching that affordable model and allowing the consumers to go all in on the higher priced model as long as this tax credit that expires today, the $7,500 federal tax credit, to allow them to fully utilize it and not distract consumers with an affordable model. That would be stupid. So this all ends today. And that means now we are in hot territory for the launch, for the surprise launch. So what happens in October and how do we handle this? The key points. Now we have a bunch of questions, of course. Why are they not launching it? If I'm right, why are they not launching it tomorrow? Right, October 1st, tax credits expire. Why not just launch it? Not so fast. That would not necessarily be smart. If you have a Model Y and people bought this thing, you want to get them used to the new situation before you launch a new model, at least one or two weeks, in my opinion, because you want to, you know, see this Model Y, the previous Model Y, go into that no tax credit situation and give it a week or so for the market to adjust. You also don't want to run into the PR problem that the affordable, uh, that the tax credits are now expiring. That will be a big topic for the rest of the week, probably, where people say, oh my God, EVs are imploding because now there's no tax credit, so there's certain PR fire. You don't want to go into that situation. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. And you don't want to frustrate people too much who just bought the Model Y. Now the Model Y buyers who are going in now, October 1st and so on, they are basically proven to not care about money too much because they just missed the tax credit. So they are not going to be too frustrated if they miss the affordable model. You also want to dominate media cycles when the competition launches. Very likely the Xiaomi YU7 and the Zeker 7X are going to ramp up on getting introduced. That's another thing in October. So you want to match them potentially. And you want to reframe the E49, the affordable uh, Tesla Model Y as a credit proof affordability thing, right? So the most likely situation, in my opinion, is that Tesla will give the launch two to three weeks, but not longer because you want to launch that thing in October. So I came up with three scenarios that I want to quickly go through because everything in life, especially with stocks, is probabilistic. So I don't know what the exact answer is, but I have a high confidence that this is going to happen in October. And I have three scenarios when exactly. And in a second, we will go into why it's so important to understand what these scenarios are on the timeline. So, and we will look at a calendar in a second. So you don't have to overstress your brain. In a second, I'll show you a calendar with the markings on it. But for now, there's a scenario here, uh, the baseline scenario, the most likely scenario, in my opinion, that we launch the affordable model 
before earnings, which is October 22nd, so before that, but give it a few weeks time to actually let the market digest this new credit situation or that there's no tax credit and adjust to this new situation. So the key, key priority here is narrative control, inventory clearance of the old Model Y, not the old, you know, Juniper Model Y and Model 3s. So there's some inventory clearing there. And I think there is a 65% probability that this happens. I think there's a 10% probability that I'm wrong and we don't launch in October, but we have a 65% probability, in my opinion, that we launch probably October 16th or 17th, the Thursday or Friday before the earnings call, right? This would beautifully tie into Q3 earnings. So you can then in earnings discuss all about the new model, uh, great for hype, but also no requirement in earnings to tell anyone about the performance of that new affordable model because it was only three days before. So on the earnings call, you're not under pressure to already report how it's going. That's very different from the second situation, right? Uh, and by the way, in earnings, you want to reframe this whole thing as a post-credit hero without Q3 disruption. Uh, so, you know, you want to basically position the affordable model as the answer to all the analyst concerns that Q4 is going to be horrible. Without the affordable model, of course, it is going to be horrible. But with the affordable model, it might very well be the best quarter Tesla has ever seen. How does it compare to the other two scenarios? So the second scenario, I call it the aggressive market share grab. That is a scenario where Tesla launches this affordable model now, tomorrow, on Friday or Thursday, or in the next week. I think it's less likely. I think there's a 20% chance that they're doing that. And that is all about maximizing Q4 sales, right? Because you probably need a month to really get this up to speed and, you know, all the little things that need to happen, even though they will be very well prepared if they actually launch it, but still there's some fine tuning. So if they really think in, oh, we need to nail this Q4 and maximize sales, maybe they don't want to miss out on two weeks of affordable model sales, but it comes at these, you know, downsides that then you can't clear out your inventory of the existing model Y, you probably cannibalize more, more brutally into Model Y. <clears throat> so I'm not the biggest believer in the scenario, but it definitely can happen. And this is important. This could definitely can happen because it informs our trading strategy. And then the cautious ramp, I think that's the least likely situation that they actually launch it after earnings. But I think they have to launch it in October, in my opinion. So the cautious ramp would be any time after October 22nd, right? Uh, that creates a delay if inventory or export is lagging, aligns with holiday promotions, because there's holidays coming up, and avoids clashing with E41 production start, even though I don't think that's very likely, <clears throat> because I think they have production probably already prepared and nailed. We saw a lot of like secret preparations in Texas and all over the place. Okay, let's talk. Now you have the three scenarios when the actual launch happens. And let's assume also there is a launch event. I think it's scenario one and three in the non-aggressive scenario, so launch in October 16th or 17th, or late October, there will be very likely a launch event. If they decide to launch very quickly this week or next week, there will not be an event because there's no time to announce the event un unless they do it today or tomorrow, the announcement. So since I believe the mid scenario, the scenario October 16th or 17th is the most likely, I think there's also likely to be an event. Now let's take a look at event timing. This is another very important thing because if the event gets announced, that will drive the stock up too. We will get to the stock, the most likely stock behavior in these scenarios in a second so we can take action. I make it very quick. If you look at the delivery events, how did they happen, the announcement events, how long before were they announced? Cybertruck event, November 30th, 2023. I'm not going to go into all the dates now, but long story short, 10 days, the Cybertruck event was announced before. AI day two, 10 days previous announcement. AI day one, nine days before. Model Y unveil in 2019, 11 days before. Uh, Sammy and Roadster event, seven days before. So the bottom line is, I would say 10 days is a good assumption. So if we now put this all into a calendar, now pay attention. See, I gave you this nice calendar. So you have little pumpkins, little spiders, little owls, because it's October, the most beautiful month of the year, maybe in competition with Christmas. But here's the calendar. And what I did here, you see my style, my graphic style is actually matching this here, right? So it's a little infantile, the whole thing. 
but the content is not infantile at all. So here, I will get into this red in a second, what happens on Thursday and on Friday, <clears throat> because that introduces some risk. But here's scenario number one. So I don't think they're gonna launch this week, even in the most aggressive scenario, they're probably gonna do it next week. So that's scenario number one. I can't tell you, I, I don't think that's very likely, but any time next week, there could be a surprise announcement. Boom, here's the Model Y, affordable Model Y. Here's the website, go on and buy this thing. Very surprising, right? If the most likely scenario happens, <clears throat> I call it here number two, scenario number two, and we launch on the 16th, because often these Tesla events are on Thursday, so most likely 16th, not 17th, very unlikely 15th, but so 16th or 17th, then next week we will hear about the announcement. You will get an invite and that will spread like wildfire. And people will say, oh my God, there is an invite to some form of launch event on Thursday, October 16th. I wonder what that means. And everyone knows what it means, okay? That's the most likely scenario in my opinion. We have to be prepared for all scenarios, but this is the most likely. The blue thing is earnings, big deal. October 22nd, we have Tesla earnings, boom. And then the less likely scenario is that they will do it after earnings. I also think it's unlikely they do it du during earnings, like the day after earnings or something. Who knows? Also possible, but I don't think so. So these are the scenarios. And trading wise, right? If we go into the trading strategy, I will elaborate a little bit here what this all means. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technicalities of trading because I'm still fine tuning something. So that's going to happen tomorrow what the exact option strategies are, because I think options are the right tool here. But I will talk about some estimations here, what this will do to the stock price already today, so we can mentally prepare. Sorry, I don't have the exact trades prepared for you that I will do, but that comes tomorrow. So what does it mean for the stock? What is the trading surrounding situation? So first of all, I think we have, you know, let's go up here. I think there's a $40 move here. $40 move is pretty likely. I think there is a huge magnet now for all time highs. And if you go here, just take a quick look, <clears throat> all time highs, this is a one year scenario. And you see in December 17th, I remember this day very well. I know exactly where I was because I lost a lot of money because I didn't react to the Fed quick enough. And I knew we are dangerous territory. I want everyone. It's going to be bloody. But uh, sept uh, December 17th, 2024, he hit, you know, basically 488 over here close at 479 and um so let's say 480 that's the all-time high and we are at 437 and had a great run up last 30 days right from 347 to uh 444 at the peak here and i think this all-time high will play a very magnetic role in october so if there's a run up this 480 level is extremely likely to happen, in my opinion, if this whole run up happens and if there's no other distraction here, which is a big if. But if this is actually happening, right? So we are looking at 480 and 480 being the magnet where we end up with this whole situation. But when, right? Let's assume for now, I'm just saying for now, this green scenario, the number two. So something happens Thursday, Friday. I will go into this in a second, what the risk is. But most likely, let's assume nothing happens, right? Deliveries are expected, stock goes up to a 2% or 3% or goes down to a 3%, no one cares. But then next week we have this announcement and people are like, oh my God, the announcement is happening. And we actually go into that. I think then we are looking at a situation where you are running up into 480 into earnings. This is very good for us because we don't want to be exposed to earnings. You never know what happens in earnings. So I would really prefer not to trade this aggressive trade through earnings, which would be perfect for the second scenario. Maybe also for the first one, the first one will be very disturbing, stochastic, right? Because it just happens and then you need to act fast. I will go into this tomorrow, what we exactly do to hedge these situations. But very likely we have the announcement here, the greens, and then the stock just runs up into that event. I think it's probably something where you want to position yourself to have options expiration here on Friday or do something else with leaps. So you don't take the risk here through earnings and you don't pay for the premiums and earnings. This would be a nice situation, right? If it's the red and nothing happens, well, we have to be prepared for that. What are the, the risks we are facing? You know that I want for a macro market correction, seasonal correction still in the cards. I think now it's kind of unlikely to happen between the Fed meetings. I thought the highest risk was the previous Fed meeting, 
I'm shifting my seasonal market correction risk now towards the second Fed meeting, which is October 29th, the announcement. So you don't have to worry about that. So I think we are comparatively safe on the market correction side for the next couple of weeks. Um, then we have delivery risk, right? Here we might face some risk because what if the delivery is coming bad? So if you are too leveraged and try to cap catch this upside and you go all in totally on margin or something, which you should never do, and then deliveries are bad, well, this is some risk. So if you put an aggressive trade on the green here, you have to consider this as an obstacle you want to avoid or at least not be fully exposed. So you take on something here tomorrow, maybe Thursday, hold through it, see what happens, and then go all in here. All in meaning whatever your risk appetite is for this trade. So basically we bracket in this affordable model launch trade exactly here. Um, and then we are ready to go, right? So you just have to understand the blue you want to avoid and the red you want to kind of avoid or at least not go full in. These are the, your two risk uh, uh, milestones left and right of the trade. So what else do we have? Earnings. And then of course we have the risk. Do I have the risk here? No, I didn't even explain this, but there's another risk that the announcement itself, oh yeah, here, the announcement itself is disappointing, right? I think the only way the announcement can be disappointing of the affordable model is if it's too expensive, which is like a risk, right? Because the Model Y is at 45,000. Can they really cut out 10,000, let's say 8,000 out of that cost and give up 2,000 margins or something? They need to go under 35,000, in my opinion, to really get the benefit of this whole thing. Ideally, 32,000. That would be huge. But this is very difficult. So there's a little bit of a risk in the whole trade that is just a disappointment. I don't think it's very high, this risk, but it's a risk. Okay, that's what I wanted to share. So you now, now you know the whole timing, the playbook, the stocks, and the risk bracketing here. Uh, what we do tomorrow, do we just have to give me a little bit more time for the final trades I want to present to you for the October Tesla playbook. And to give you a little teaser what I'm working on, for myself mostly, is we basically now that we know our thesis, we have a good theory where the stock is gonna go, we have a good assessment of the risks surrounding it, both on the timeline and in general, we have to make the decision between these three central instruments. All of this, by the way, is only for Tesla shareholders who have a strong core position that they don't wanna touch, that are a little greedy like me, that see the alpha of this trade, and say, can I capture that alpha on this trade on top of my core position? Which leaves us basically three opportunities here. We can use calls, long calls, the most expensive option, of course, because you're paying for a lot of premium here, versus short puts, the most aggressive option that has the most leverage, but carries, you know, a lot of risk. Or do we do margin on stocks, which is like in between, well, it has pros and cons, it's less risky than short puts. It doesn't pay for, you know, the premium, the basic data burn and churn. So, mm, but has the disadvantage that can be leveraged too much. So these are the three options. It's a little technical here, but we'll, I will go into the dollar advantages for each one and disadvantages tomorrow when I figure out the exact strategy that I also want to put on starting tomorrow. I'm going to share this then. I hope that was interesting. It's going to be a hot October. So we will conclude this little series tomorrow with the exact technical traits and scenarios based on what we discussed today. And I hope that's interesting. Don't be too scared of October. I think the opportunities outweigh the risks by a lot. You need to know what you're doing. Hope that was interesting and see you tomorrow.